Hi, my name is Brian Capo, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. I'm still debugging my Chromebook stuff, so uh, forgive me if this video is a little bit wonky. This week I'm going to talk about kind of uh, an important preprint that came out, and it's it's big enough to where it was written up in Nature. Big names and statistics want to shake up the much maligned p-value. Uh, it was written in written up in Science, um, and so here's the paper. Uh, it has a lot of authors there, very esteemed, very accomplished authors. And so let's go through the arguments they make, or at least some of the arguments they make, and then talk about some of the criticisms. So uh, first of all, I want to mention, I don't really think this paper is about p-values. Um, it, it is about type 1 error rates and statistical hypothesis testing and about trying to create a more strict threshold. That can be done via p-values, but it could be done via confidence intervals or um, you know, rejection regions or whatever. Uh, so it's not, it's not really discussing the p-value at, at all. It's really talking about standards of evidence for hypothesis testing for the community at large. That's, that's what the paper is really about. And the long and short of it is they're suggesting take the canonical 0.05 type 1 error rate that's suggested and take that down to 0 0.005, so by a factor of 10. Okay, so let's talk about some of their arguments as to why to do this. First of all, the basis for why they're just trying to do this is the so-called reproducibility crisis, that people are having trouble reproducing papers uh, that are were like kind of uh, accepted as true in standards, and then there's been a lot of work suggesting that there's maybe just too large of a rate of false positive findings in the literature. And that's part of the discussion. Okay, so uh, why do we convert our test statistics into, you know, interpreting them via thresholding and error rates? Okay, well, one of the reasons is because probability is, is ideally more interpretable and more interpretable across experiments than some of the other kind of test statistics that you might come up with. So the ideas of probability as a standard unit of measurement that people conceptually understand is what, what often people are trying to get at when they threshold at 0.05. People kind of j intuitively maybe understand that 5% is a relatively low probability. I think I would argue that people by and large don't understand uh, can't conceptualize what a 5% probability is very well, but maybe that's a topic for a different discussion. Um, so one of their arguments they, they go through in this paper is that, yeah, that is a little hard for people to understand uh, um, probability in that way. So why don't we convert it into something we think is a more important quantity, which is Bayes factors. And um, here's the formula they have for Bayes factors right here, but let me write some stuff just to remind ourselves you know, that what really what the Bayes factor gives us is that the, it says that the posterior odds of a hypothesis is equal to the Bayes factor times the prior odds. So it, first of all, it's a super nice formula that we don't need to know the prior odds, which is kind of a hard thing. Um, we can use the data to get the, and the likelihood to get the Bayes factor. And then for some people, the Bayes factor is just a conceptually uh, more intuitive thing to think about. And they talk about how if you do some calibration efforts, p-values give um, unacceptably uh, a p-value, uh, uh, a type 1 error rate of 0.05, thresholding your p-value at 0.05 or doing your performing your test at 0.05, gives an unaccept unacceptably low Bayes factor um, that many people who, who you know, believe in Bayes factors think, well, when I kind of interpret things that way, it would make mo much more sense to have a much higher uh, Bayes factor, lower type 1 error rate, okay? And that's basically what this plot gives. It shows their their, cal their calibration, which isn't perfect, of Bayes factors and p-values, because the p-values and Bayes factors are not the same thing. They go through some, some rough calibrations, and they say, well, if you, if you calibrate it, it's just uh, a 0.05 just isn't, isn't uh, uh, large enough. Uh, or uh, 0.05 isn't small enough, le leading to a Bayes factor that, that is too small. Okay. So that's one argument that gets made, that gets made. Um, the, the other is how they came up with 0.05. Well, they make some rough calculations about the false positive rate, and you can see the formula they're using for the false positive rate right here. In order to calculate a false positive rate, you actually need to know what the rate of true hypotheses there are, true null hypotheses there are out in the wild, out in, you know, in research world. And that's, of course, an unknowable thing, but however, they, you can get it some rough idea of the evidence and that you can make some guesses about it. And so they, they show this plot, which is very informative. They talk about the, the power of the test being studied 
what that would of tests being studied, what that would imply about the false positive rate, and you know what the prior odds that that kind of proportion of true null hypotheses out in the wild, how that impacts things. And this, there's nothing surprising about this plot. Um, as your power goes up, you're going to have a lower false positive rate. Um, as as you get more um, uh, more true research hypotheses. You're going to get a lower false uh, false positive rate because you're you're finding truth. It's easier to find true things if there's more true things out there, okay. And then also you're going to have a lower false positive rate if you have a lower threshold, okay. If you have a 0.05 threshold, you're up in these three points, three curves up here. And if you have a lower threshold, 0 0.005, you have these three curves down there. And that makes, of course, total sense too. If you make it harder to reject, you're going to have fewer false positive. You're going to have a lower false positive rate, okay. So um, what one of the arguments that they're really making is that, you know, toward the end of this of this of these sets of curves, that these are just much more shallow. And and the argument is that we think it's possible that many of the tests being performed out in the you know, in research world are relatively low power. So that so we're concerned about about the false positive rate. And we think that in general, the false positive rate is too is unacceptably high. Uh, for the range of power that we think studies are going on, and and so it's worthwhile to cut down, cut back on the threshold, or you know, lower the threshold, increase the standard of evidence. Okay, so that's the big, that's the gist of the arguments, and it's you know it's pretty well argued. I think you, you know it's a very accessible paper. I would suggest you argue it, and many of the common um, objections they very much so um, dealt with. Um, the first being, of course, potentially that the false negative rate would be too high if we control the false positive rate much higher. But I think that's their fundamental point is that we think the false positive rate is too high, so we're willing to make that trade off. That, that's the starting point. So that, that's, um, I think, you know, they, they, they're basically uh, starting from that point. Okay. But then they, they also talk about, well, you're not, you know, considering all these other aspects of statistics that might lead to artificial um, artificially declaring, uh, um, you know, uh, research hypotheses is true when the null hypotheses are true, you know, so things like multiple, uh, multiple comparisons, p-hacking, uh, that sort of thing, selective reporting, so on. And they basically say, yes, absolutely, we don't talk about those things, that's worth discussing, but, you know, if we take the collection of people who are acting honestly and doing good faith statistics, we're saying among those we should still continue to lower the type 1 error rate. Um, they also say address the possibility that the error rate should change by field and they say well this already occurs basically and we're just talking about those fields that don't have well established criteria and you know especially for those fields where the criteria is different it's usually much lower okay um so i think if, if, if you read criticisms of this uh work you should look in their fact they have here at the end and see if they address it and then see what they the response to their addressing of the criticism is um, in order to be kind of intellectually honest about this. So my, um, I think the criticism of this work that seems to play uh, mostly for me uh, is the idea that that maybe the, the attention of this is a little bit misguided in the sense that, um, you know, if you think of you know, obtaining a significant research finding as the, the steps is encompassing a football field, that this is covering the last yard where there's 99 yards of other things that go on until you get to that point. Um, and, and I think most of us that are highly involved in applied statistics see how unbelievably messy those first 99 yards and how potentially problematic they are. And at that point, we, 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 we say, well, you know, kind of, you know, we're so much more concerned about that stuff than we are about, you know, kind of relatively arbitrary thresholding rules at the end that we're, that that's where we feel like the focus should really lie. And, but that isn't technically an argument against this paper. That's just a tech, that's more of an argument of where we focus our attention. Um, so, okay. So uh, if you get a chance, that, that's, I think, a discussion of this paper and what I think of as the, the, one of the key criticisms. Okay, so uh, if you get a chance, subscribe to our newsletter, subscribe to the news, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and ask a question. All right, I'll see you next week.